Hi, welcome back to the North Carolina Plumbing Code class. Uh, so we're looking to pick up with this, uh, part two of chapter seven in sanitary drainage in the 2018 edition of the North Carolina Plumbing Code. Um, I had a pretty cool uh, uh, phone call just a little bit ago uh, from Samuel Dixon, who uh, was able to get his uh, North Carolina uh, plumbing license. So uh, Samuel, congratulations there, buddy. And uh, if, if these videos were able to help you a little bit, uh, I'm really glad. So I appreciate you reaching out and letting me know uh, that you passed that thing. So uh, good luck to you and all your future endeavors with it. If there's something I can do to help, just uh, reach out to me. Uh, but we will continue on. Uh, so now we're picking up with part two of, um, of chapter seven. Where we finished is on page 67, the table 709.1. Uh, list your fixtures there on the left. Gives you minimum trap sizes and DFU values. All of that from that chart right there. So um, we cover that and you flip the page over to page 68 and let's look at pick up it with 709.3. It talks about uh, what are the values for continuous and semi continuous flow. Uh, so let's just say what you know, say, well, what is that talking about? Um, let's just say you had maybe a, um, a commercial kitchen. And you had an ice maker over here, big standing uh, ice maker, and we've got a, a drain off on this thing. And so it's been ported down. We got a little drain coming over, and that drains down, and here's the floor, and maybe it goes into a floor drain, okay? So we've got that thing. So we've got a indirect waste drain that's going to take all the... Um, as far as the, the water from this ice maker that's melting off, draining down, condensation, drip, dripping down into here. So it's going to say, well, what do we count? What do we call count that for um, for a DFU value? Uh, so anything for a semi-continuous, meaning it's going to drain and then just quit draining for a little bit and then drain a little bit more and quit draining for or might have a slow, steady, continuous drain. It says, how do we compute that? So it says... For continuous and semi-continuous flow into the drainage system, hub drains, uh, sewage lift pumps, etc., it shall be computed on the basis that one gallon per minute is equivalent to two fixture units. One gallon per minute it equals two fixture units. Or two D, uh, DFUs drainage fixture unit. Okay. So if you were looking on a drawing and um, Samuel, I don't know if they still have something like this on your state exam. Uh, they do have a couple uh, different variations of the test that you could be taking, but they might have you uh, doing some sizing, uh, DFU values and stuff. And if one of the drawings was still of a commercial kitchen, they might have had like an ice maker over there that was draining into the system. And they might have had a note on there saying how many gallons per minute is uh, this the ice maker producing. So let's just say it was over there and it said this is producing a half gallon per minute. All right. So on the computation that one gallon per minute equals two DFUs, if you if you said, well, we only got a half a gallon per minute uh, on this. So we could say that that's going to be worth one DFU if if they're having you add up DFUs on that thing. OK, uh, likewise, if you went up to something that was producing two gallons a minute, then you're looking at uh, four DFUs. OK. Oh, let's see. Now let's jump on down to Section 710, uh, the drainage system sizing. OK. So you're going to be looking at some of these charts, 710.11, 710.12. It's uh, sizing the first table, 710.11, is building drains and sewers. Okay, that's what you're trying to figure for, building drains and sewers. So let's just say, let's just make it a house here. Okay. Okay. So we said by term, the building drain is this main trunk line. 
inside the building. Everything else is kind of branching off there and maybe shooting up. If you got some stacks or whatever, if it's two story, you come out and we've got a clean out, front main clean out. And the junction of this is 10 foot outside the building wall. Okay. Then from that point on, like I said, uh, if for the clean out, that only has to be within 10 feet of the, the building wall, even though by definition, the, t the term changes 10 foot outside the building wall. It becomes, goes from building uh, drain to building sewer. Uh, you can move that clean out. You might don't have to say, oh, I got to put that clean out 10 foot outside and then stick it out in somebody's yard. Well, no, I, I normally keep that a lot closer to the house. It's just within 10 foot of the house because I'd really like to put that clean out uh, over if there's like going to be a little flower bed or something like that along the front of the uh, house. That way it's not out there in the grass. Um, whenever they get set in the grass, it's always perfect. Uh, when you look at the top of that clean out, the clean out and then has a little plug like that. And here's your ground. Uh, they always get set perfectly, uh, to where th your mower deck will clear this part. And then the, in the blade catches that cap and cuts it and busts it off and everything else. I, I don't know why they always seem to kind of get set the right height for that. Um, but in saying that, if you do have to put it in the yard, you can't put it. If that clean out gets set a little too low and they final grade over and you got, there's your grade, that does not pass code. If it's that far under the ground, it does not meet code. Uh, but there's no maximum on it. Uh, it can look really, really bad, but it does meet code. If here's your ground level and you just don't even cut it down and that thing's way up there in the air sticking way up, that does meet code. Um, you could say, man, what's that thing? Oh, you got sticking out of your yard. Uh, it, it looks really bad, but they, they don't want it to get covered. You could still access that. Um, I like to, I like to put them right there in the flower beds where it's going to kind of end up getting cut, covered up, or, you know, a little, uh, maybe some bushes kind of grow up some flowers or something, try to hide that a little bit. You aren't going to catch it with your mower. Um, but I will leave that up a little bit because they're probably going to shovel some mulch and things. And we don't want that to get totally covered over side that was all totally side note let's jump on into here where that's called building sewer on this side okay to where that goes in and connects over to and then you probably got the uh the street connection here in winston is cast iron and that's going to go out and tie into the sewer main for, for the uh, main there okay let's look at doing that first table is sizing these it gives diameter of the pipe over there on the left side. And then you've got a couple selections of different columns. All those numbers that are in there in this chart, all these numbers are DFUs. Okay, all DFU uh, value numbers here. Um, so, but underneath there's these four columns it's the D the number of DFUs that can be on this size pipe is going to be dependent upon uh, depends a little bit upon the on a slope slope is how much of a drop per foot that you have. So a 16th inch, a 16th drop per foot, an eighth inch per foot, a quarter inch per foot and a half inch per foot is what you're dealing with. So if you look at it and you say, oh, well, why does a two inch start at 21 DFUs? Why don't they at least have something over here? I mean, we could cut that in half and put 10 or something. You say, why doesn't it have it? Well, a two-inch pipe. Can you put an eighth of an inch slope on a two-inch pipe? No. If you remember close to the beginning of the chapter, we went about pipe sizes and how what's the minimum slope requirements. So on a two-inch pipe, the minimum slope requirement is a quarter per foot. So it's going to start at a quarter. Okay. Uh, when you get to a three-inch pipe, its minimum is an eighth per foot. So the first number that you're going to have in there is an eighth and then goes up. Okay. So how we're going to size the building drains and sewers is how many DFUs are on them and what is the, and how much slope do we have on the pipe? Okay. Now we don't want to overlook all this. If you look really, really close at the end, it says A, B, C, D. So you've got to drop down here and read your notes. The minimum size of any building drain serving a water closet shall be three inches minimum. Okay. So if you've got the building drain, it's talking about this drain here. 
if this serves a water closet, uh, you're going to have to have, um, you're go it's going to have to be a three inch line because you can calculate it out by DFUs and say, well, let's see. Um, let's say I, I did a, uh, a small little shop here and I'm just, I'm going to stick, uh, you know, I just want to sink in there. Um, you know, maybe I got two sinks. Okay. Two kind of, it's where I'm can wash my hands and over little, little parts, clean, wash, wash some stuff up. And so that's all that you've got inside there. And you say, okay, well, let's add up the DFUs. Well, I got two, uh, I got one on a lavatory sink. If that's what I'm, if, if that's what I'm calling it, or maybe I've got two wash sinks. I'm going to say, well, two DFUs a piece. So you say, oh, well, this building drain only has four DFUs on it. And you say, oh, well, four DFUs, you know, or you can, or you're looking at something here. You could say, oh, well, my goodness, um, you know, what size it's, it's going to handle. But maybe um, you could say, well, a, a two inch pipe is going to handle up to 21 DFUs. So you say, we're good. Well, how about you put and just say, well, man, if I've got my little shop back there, I don't want to have to run all the way out of the house to go to the bathroom. So let me just throw a toilet in there. So that's going to add in. If you look back over at this page, you said, I'm adding that water closet in a residential 1.6 gallon flush water closet. You come down and you say, oh, that's three DFUs. So I'm really only I'm going to put a half bath and then I'm going to add one wash sink. So I've got three DFUs. Let's say this is this is my toilet. I'm going to say three DFUs for that. I'm going to have a lavatory sitting beside it. That goes up and comes out and catches a lab. Then I'll vent on there. So that's one DFU. And then I've got another sink over in my shop somewhere, and that's going to be worth two DFUs. So you said, okay, just number DFUs, three, four, five, six DFUs on this drain. Six DFUs on the drain. And you say, okay, six DFUs. Oh, yeah, two-inch pipe can handle it. A two-inch can handle up to 21 DFUs, even run at its minimum slope. Um, but it says, no, we got a water closet. So the main drain has to at least be three inches. So even though if you look at it strictly by the numbers, you can say, oh, we could do it strictly by the numbers. But it's got a note on there that says uh, no less than three inch. It's so the minimum size building drain. If you had a question on there to say, what well, you know, um, what's the minimum size of your building drain? It's going, it serves a water closet at least three inches. Minimum size of the building sewer. Look at the next note. No building sewer should be less than four inches in size. Minimum four inches. Okay. So we've got to at least start at four inches. From there on, we can we can look at the numbers. Um, now, what they should have put, if you're looking at this chart, they put footnote A, B, C, D all right up here at the top of the chart saying it applies to all of these. Really, Note C that says no more than three water closets. Note C should have been right here on the, the three inch diameter pipe. Three inch diameter pipe should then should say footnote C. The maximum number of water closets that you can have on a three inch line is three. Three toilets on a three inch line. All right. Three on three maximum. Uh, the next note is says a minimum of two inch diameter this run underground so if you, if you were doing a house and it was on a slab if, so anything that you're going to bury and it's going to be under under the house so maybe if you're running a line over if you if you look back at the and say well back here on page 67 it tells me if i'm going for and running a tub i could put an inch and a half drain yes if it's on a crawl space to where it's not underground but if you're burying the line to go underground to go for that tub, that footnote says a minimum of a two inch line that's uh, that's underground. OK, so make sure if you're looking on your state exam, if they give you a house and it does happen to be on a slab, make resist the urge to say, oh, yeah, I know what that is. That's an inch and a half run over there. Minimum to to the tub. But no nope, underground got to be two inches. OK, um, so. How you use the chart, if I ran, a, it says that my man, if I'm going to run a house and I'm trying to determine I've got a main building drain here and I'm trying to determine the size of that, um, 
I'm going to look at it and say, well, if I've got a toilet in there, I know I've got to be three inches already. So now use the chart to look at it and say, I've got a three inch drain, uh, building drain. If I ran those three inch drains at their minimum slope, which is going to be an eighth of an inch per foot, how many DFUs can I put on that three inch drain? So you look at three inch and you go over to the eighth inch and it says 36 DFUs is what you can put on there. 36 DFUs. Now I can get a few more DFUs out of it if I just put the pitch just a little bit steeper and go to a quarter of an inch per foot. Then I can go up to 42 inch DFUs could be on that exact same drain by, by increasing the pitch a little bit. Um, whenever everything residential that I've done. Uh, it's never been the number of DFUs that have made me increase my pipe size from going from like a three inch building drain to a to a four inch building drain. What's made me have to increase that is the number of water closets. Um, you know, it's always when they add in that fourth bath or, um, you know, when that fourth toilet comes in from that point up, it, uh, it's got to go up to four inch. So you could have three if you had three toilets coming down. And maybe we had some more toilets up here and they're coming down the line. When you pick up at the point that that fourth toilet comes in, there's the fourth toilet, fourth water closet. That's the point. You've got to be at four, four inch pipe up to there. You can come out the back of it then, though, and reduce it down and then go up to, you know, three inches could be up here catching up to the, the first three toilets. But then you got to go up to four beyond that. OK, <clears throat> then you're going to look down at table seven, ten point one. And it goes over how to uh, how to size some other stuff. How do we size horizontal fixture branches, and how do we size stacks? Those the stack that general term for a ver vertical pipe. Okay, so the first column is the diameter of the pipe that we're dealing with. The next column is it's the total for the horizontal branch. Okay, so that one's horizontal branches. These next three are going to be sizing of stacks. It's telling you, the first column says the total discharge into one branch interval. Okay, the total discharge into one branch interval. The total for the stack of three branch intervals or less. And then this is the total for stack of greater than three branch in or intervals in the next one. If you said, well, what's a branch interval? If you're wondering where that is, where can, where can you go to find the answer? Chapter 2, under definitions, will give you branch interval. So basically, a branch interval is, it really comes down to it about every floor level that would have. So it's got to be at least a minimum of eight feet in between um, that, that has plumbing on it. It's called a branch interval. So here would be the stack. And then we'd say, well, we're coming off to the first floor. And there's a horizontal branch that comes off to the first floor. And, um, you know, how many DFUs have we got on that, you know? And then you go up and say, well, we got another branch interval up here. And pick it up some more. And then we'd say, okay, well, let's get two branch intervals. And so they, they break up the columns to say, well, how many branch intervals are tied to this stack? And that's the column that you need to go to to look for. Once again, all these numbers. Then here are the are the DFU values. Okay, so, sorry if we, that was glitching there a little bit. Uh, hopefully we're uh, hopefully we're back. Okay. All right. I hope you caught that. I don't know what to, what just happened. We were we might have lost it there for a minute, uh, but we were looking at. Horizontal branches and the stacks. So hopefully, hopefully we cut that in the video. Okay. Well, once again, if you've got footnotes, look at your footnotes. Read the footnotes. Um, where are we? Okay. Let's continue on. Let me get that off of there. Sorry, see my screen glitching and stopping and everything else kind of threw me off there. Threw me off my game. I'm going to let you read section uh, 711 offsets in the drainage piping in buildings of five of five stories or more. OK, 
Um, if you do, is so you go in line and then you put an offset, some type of offset, and then bring it back in line vertical again. It says offsets in the drainage piping in building drains of five stories or more. Gives you some um, uh, some information on that. Let's jump down to 712 uh, on sumps and ejectors. Okay, so what this is, a sump or ejector is if you might need some type of pump or something to, to pump the, the, the liquid, the drainage, the, uh, the sewage and everything else up to get it to where it can end up fly, flowing by gravity. Any part of the plumbing system that does not fly by flow by gravity is called uh, that building's building subdrain. Okay, so it's lower than the point that it's going to drop uh, flow out by gravity. Let's just say here is the street connection. Okay, there it is. Street clean out that goes up and ties into the to the main at the the sewer. Uh, when utilities comes through or whoever the utility contractor is, they going to come and stub us in Winston anyway. This is uh, four inch cast iron that's coming out of here. That's what we're going to tie to. So we come in and we're going to plumb up. We are plumbing up this house here. Okay. So, um, let me redraw that just a little bit. We might have run the sewer line, connected to their connection, ran that in, and there it goes. And so everything, everything that comes in here on this main level can be supported. It can flow by gravity on out, okay? We, we've tied, tied out everything up there. But maybe they say they got a basement and they say, hey, we want uh, we want a bathroom in the basement. Man, that's going to be my man cave down there. I'm, I'm going to put me up a big screen TV and got everything else set up how I want it. I don't want to have to go upstairs to have to go to the bathroom, though. So we want to put a, uh, a bathroom down there. Well, if we install a bathroom down here, it's not going to flow up to get to this. So we might have to put in a sewage ejector. Okay. So we've got this big tank. Uh, that we set down in the ground. They also, they make other things to say, hey, well, how about I wanted to add one? Yes, uh, Santa Flow, and there's different products as far as making above ground uh, little pump takes that sit behind the toilet and can can uh, grind everything up and actually discharges it through a smaller uh, line. But if I'm doing it new, I'd like to go ahead and put in a, a it, it looks like about like a 30-gallon trash can is what it looks like. I'm going to stick that in the ground and then I'm going to take and I'm going to drain everything and it's going to flow into the side of this can. It's got an opening there. This drains in and it flows into here. So I've caught all the plumbing to this bathroom. It drains into this tank and then there's a pump down in here and when the, and it's got a float switch on it. Okay. So when the water level gets high enough and all that sewage starts to fill that tank, when the float switch comes on and activates, the pump kicks on and it will grind everything mess, the toilet paper, everything else that you got it that's in there, grind it up, shoot it out up here, and we pump it up, and it comes across, and then ties into it through a Y connection back into the existing line to where now it's going to flow by gravity out. But we're going to pump that out. So that's what this um, uh, this sewage ejector is. There's, you could also, if it's just uh, clear liquid waste, you could do like some type of, some type of sump pump. Um, that you catch now on what it's saying is what's required on it what kind of valves are required a check valve there's one full open valve and a means for clean out need to be located on the discharge side of the check uh, uh, a check valve a full open valve and means of clean out located on the discharge side of the check valve should be installed in the pump or ejector discharge piping between the pump or ejector and the gravity drainage system. Okay, so here's the gravity drainage system. There's your pump here on the discharge line. So let me blow that up right at right out here as it's coming out. Okay, right in this area here, the discharge side of that pump. This is what we're going to do. It says 
Let me blow it up. Here comes the discharge line coming out. So the first thing that we're going to put in, it says we are, here's the items. We need a check valve. We need a, um, what else do we need? A full open valve. Basically like a, uh, a shutoff valve. It's where you can shut off, but it, when you open it, it's going to be full open. There's no not going to be any restriction in that line. Open valve. And then we need a, a clean out in the line. Okay. So what we want to do, and it said the full open the valve and the clean out are going to be on the on the uh, um, on the ejection side. So located on the discharge side of the check valve. So the first line, so we're going to put a check. So the pump's down here. It's pumping after everything out this way. Both, and then you got a check valve it installed. And so that check valve, when you pump it out, it's going to open up and let your discharge go out. But then if things were going to come back, it's going to shut, close back off and not let anything fall back out of that vertical and going back into the, uh, to the tank. I've, I've seen ones to where they weren't, the piping wasn't strapped up really well. The check valve went bad. And then what it was doing is the pump was kicking on. It was pumping it up, out the line, but then it had backflow, and then everything would just kind of flow back and go right back into the tank again, and then start to fill back up the tank, and then it would say, oh, it's full, so it would kick back on and pump it back out, and then it wasn't, it wasn't strapped right, it was flowing backwards, the check valve was bad, so it wasn't holding everything up, so everything was just draining back down into the tank, and it was just sitting there just cycling on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off, and they were like, yeah, man, we, we finally just unplugged this thing and... You know, it just keeps kicking on and off. So I had back in, changed out the check valve, got them a new check valve, and then also properly supported the pipe to where it was when it, after it finished pumping up by vertically, this portion of the pipe right here, even though, yes, it's being pumped through, we need to, when it turns horizontal, we need to pitch that pipe and put some slope to where it's going to slope properly. So that, that's what the check valve does. And then we've got, we want to put a shutoff valve here. Okay, or that full open valve. Because what we want to do is if I wanted to service this check valve, I want to be able to turn this valve off to where I can disconnect the check valve and check it and service it or replace it or whatever, and be able to hold that shutoff. It's going to hold everything from draining back down through. And just as we disconnect the check, there goes all this waste everywhere. So we need to be able to shut the line off. And then also be able to have a clean out. So some way of opening that pipe, rotting it out, and cleaning all this line out just in case it got all stopped up and blocked up. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. That's what we got to have there. Um, access needs to be able to get to those valves. Uh, let's see. And, yeah, Okay. So what we're going to get to, I'll get to as far as what that piping has got to be made out of in just a second. Okay. So sump design. Okay. The sump and the sump pump. Okay. This pump's got to be sized appropriately to be able to pump at the distance that you want and how much what you got coming through it. The sump pit itself, not less than 18 inches on diameter, not less than 24 inches deep, unless otherwise approved. Okay. It's got to be constructed of tile, concrete, steel, plastic, other or other approved material. Pit bottom needs to be solid. Permanent uh, support for the pump. Sump pit should be fitted with a gas tight removable cover installed flush with the grade. Uh, so a lot of the ones that I get is just just a hard plastic, hard plastic cover. It's got a little foam seal under there that bolts down. Uh, I mean. You know, you, you're, you're pooping and stuff and everything else. I mean, it's just like this cesspool sitting in there waiting to be pumped out. So you want that thing, that lid sealed pretty tight because you don't want to be smelling all that down there. Um, and then bring uh, the sump pit should be fitted with a uh, remove call, the cover that is installed flush with grade uh, or floor level or above grade or floor level. OK, so we want it either flush with it or just a little bit above. They don't want it to down. The cover should be adequate to support the anticipated loads in the area. Sump pit should be vented in accordance with Chapter 9. Yeah, Chapter 9 deals with venting, and we'll talk about venting. Okay, the discharge char, charge pipe and fittings. Discharge pipe and fittings serving the sump pumps and injectors shall be constructed of materials pr 
pressure laid, pressure rated. So that PVC, what we've been putting in for most of our, um, for all our draining stuff is, is called, it's a foam core. It's a hard shell on the inside, a foam in the middle of that core, and then a hard shell PVC on the other. It's not solid PVC. So ours is stamped right on the side. It says not for pressure. That, that cellular cellular core, foam core PVC. If you get the solid uh, PVC, it's pressure rated pipe. And it can handle the pressure. They're going to say, well, we're pumping it out. It's going to be under pressure as it gets pumped. So we want all the, the fittings and the line until it ties into your existing. We want all of that to be pressure rated um, PVC, okay, or piping. Oh, let's see. It says uh, the material is excluding cell core product, so no, can't use them, okay. Uh, let's see, the maximum affluent level, okay, so how, how full should we let this, this tank get here as it pumps, and you, and you need to set all that, you're going to adjust it. Uh, the affluent level con uh, control should be adjusted and maintained to at all times prevent the affluent uh, in the sump from rising to within two inches of the invert of the gravity drain inlet to the sump. Okay, let's take a look at that. Let me blow some of this up a little bit more. There's your tank. Okay, this is a removable lid. It's bolted down. We've got the discharge line coming out. Okay, there's the discharge line that you've got your check valve and shut up full open valve. The, the, that comes right down through. There's a gasket that goes around. It will seal off around that pipe as that pipe goes through the lid. That's coming down and is going to connect to, you get this pump here. Okay, that's good. Typically, it's going to be like a female thread. You might thread a male adapter in there. And of course, we got that sitting down here. Pumps on the bottom. It also has a place where the wire comes through. Okay, that's wired down here to pump. On the side where another gasket comes through, here is going to be the inlet for the drain. Okay, that gets sealed with a gasket. Uh, and so just everything is draining this way into here and is going to just dump down in here to the tank. Um, and then it says when you set on this pump, this pump has got a float switch, okay? Now you're going to strap this. It's got a cord to it. And most of them with a float with a, a floatable um, switch. So when this goes, when it's down, and it's just because it's going to float, where it is when the float switch is in the down is hanging down it doesn't kick on until that float switch comes up high enough okay when you got that thing up like that the pump will kick on but when the when the pump kicks on and all that goes down and that's hanging back down like this it's off okay so what you're going to do is you can take and you can strap this cord, strap it to the pipe at a point where you're going to let that thing hang over. That's float switch. So you, what you can do is you can adjust by where you put this strap on there. You can adjust the, how much, um, how much uh, affluent, as they say, or you know, how much uh, crap can come down here and water and everything can come into here before where that thing floats up and kicks on. They say you should allow at least a minimum of two inches between the bottom of this pipe where it's going to be coming in and where you've got to set, if this is the level, to where that thing is going to kick on and get it pumped out. We do not want to allow it to say that stuff is backing up into this pipe and we, we've got the float switch set way too high to where it's not kicking on until it starts to back up. So we, they say, allow yourself, give yourself at least two inches between where the, everything dumps in to where we, two inches when that's, that pump ought to kick on, okay? All right. What else do they say about it? They also say uh, you need to put a sump alarm on there. Because what happens if something goes bad with it? They say you're going to have to put a sump alarm. 
they need to have. Um, once again, you're going to have a, uh, uh, you're going to have to set the float uh, level for that for the sump alarm. What you'll do is typically over here on the wall, we have ha hang this alarm. Okay. It's got little light indicators on that thing to say it'll go off. Uh, so it's got a, uh, an audible, uh, a horn will sound if the, if the alarm goes off. It also has a uh, light indicator. The light will go on if, if the tank is too full, if pulling this thing is not you know, kicking on. So you're going to set another one with the wires coming down, and you're going to set another switch. So that maybe another float. And that's going to be to your alarm, but that's going to be set a little bit higher than this one, okay? So because we don't want our alarm going off every time it fills up, we only want the alarm to go off if the pump doesn't kick on for some reason. So we set the alarm to go off a little bit after. Um, this pump goes out, and they're going to so get your electrician. They're going to put you an outlet in here. Okay. This is, they got two plugs on there. One will plug in for the alarm. And then one, the pump's going to come out and go and plug into the other one. Okay. The electrician needs to split the circuit on this thing. That can't run through the same breaker. Okay. So you've got to have the, the upper one go to its own separate breaker on its own separate circuit. And then this, uh, off of what the pump is because if you lose power may, uh, something trips a breaker or something and you lose power to the pump you don't want to lose power to your alarm at the same time so this needs to be a split circuit outlet okay two separate circuits on that thing all right let's see it says how do i how do i make the pump connection to the drainage system uh, this is over 712.3.5 at the uh, top left of page 70. Pumps connected to the drainage system shall connect to a building sewer, building drain, soil stack, waste stack, or horizontal branch. This is where the discharge line connects to the horizontal drainage piping. The connection shall be made through a Y fitting into the top of the drainage piping, and such Y fitting shall be located not less than 10 pipe diameters from the base of any soil stack, waste stack, or fixture drain. Let's cover that. So it's saying this line right here, discharge pipe. How do we connect and where do we connect that to the regular drainage system? Okay, remember that discharge line is all got to be pressure rated pipe. Okay. So here it comes. We here's the tank. It pumped up. Now we can start. Once we get to the top, now we got to start flowing that thing by gravity again. Okay, let's just say here's the existing line. So this is the existing drainage. Uh, let's just say it's the existing building drain. It's going to say we're going to come across and then we're going to come off the top of this with a Y fitting. So the, through a Y fitting, dumping into the top of the existing. Okay, so there's our fitting. Y fitting, we could straighten it back up with a 45. This needs to be pressure rated because that's part of the pressure rated. We can glue into a regular uh, three by two. Uh, fitting here, and this can all be cellular foam core pipe. This all has to be pressure rated pipe connected uh, through a Y fitting into the top. It also says, though, this has to be okay. Here it says what 10, 10 feet from the connection. Okay, we're still reading. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the um. Not less than 10 pipe diameters from the base of any, so the, uh, 10 times the pipe diameter. So if we came out, we said we had a branch or something coming into here. Uh, if it was a three inch, it says, well, we've got to be 10 times. So that's 30 inches away from another connection or from the base of a stack or anything. Now, the 10 feet 
is to say, well, how about everything's really tight? Uh, oh, let me show one more possibility of a way to connect that. Maybe you got everything coming over and just comes down the wall and goes out. Okay. Maybe they got to clean out there. This is a basement wall. You could pump this up. It could drain across and go into a Y fitting onto the stack as well. That's another way that you can connect it. Okay. That's fine. But if you just say, if I can't get more than 10, di 10 um, diameters of the pipe size away from these and you just say, man, everything's really, really tight in here. There's no place I could tie that in. They're going to make you, they're going to make you pop another line going out the wall. Maybe here's the wall and there's the existing drain going through. You might have to, you might have to come in above. So I pumped it up, came across, go popped another hole through the wall. Here it goes out through the yard and make your connection out in the yard somewhere. Okay. You might have to do that. Um, just so you know, and with that one, it says the ejector pump discharge pipe shall not discharge directly into the septic tank. We do, we can't just pop it into this, another hole in the septic tank. It says the pump line shall discharge laterally into a four inch gravity line, not less than 10 feet from the connection to the tank through a lateral Y branch. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm going to skip down. I'm going to let you read the healthcare plumbing and stuff on your own. Sterilizers, bedpan steamers, all that. Uh, let's look at backwater valves. I've got to leave time to go through it for our quiz. Backwater valves, 715.1. Okay. Sewage backflow. With the backwater valve, I think we well, we might talk about this a little bit in the chapter three. I mean, chapter two definitions maybe backwater valves um, is a check valve that is put into your drainage system to prevent stuff in your neighbor's sewage from backing up into the house. So look at it. Here's the how. You, here's how you determine if you need it. Here's out at the street. You've got a manhole cover here. Manhole cover. You're seeing these manhole covers out in the middle of the road. This is connecting. Uh, this is the, the, the main sewer line. Okay. We, as we're going to tie our house into that, let's just say here's our floor level of the house. Goes up. We ran the sewer line out and we connected into this main sewer. Okay, so what we do is we, when we come out and we try to determine, does this house need a backwater valve? You come out and you look at the upstream manhole. Now, I have drew this to where it's very obvious. Okay, it looks like everything's flowing this way. And you could see the, you could see the street is kind of heading down. So it's going to typically going to follow the grade of the, of the, the ground. Um, if it's really, really level and flat out there, you might need to get them to mark it. Or you can lift a manhole and look down in and just see which way things are flowing. Um, so, but in this case, here's your upstream. You look at the upstream manhole and you say, is this upstream manhole lid level? Is it higher or lower than our um, floor level? Okay, upstream manhole, floor level. You go straight across and you say, ah, the upstream, me upstream manhole is higher. So if the upstream manhole is higher, you do need a backwater valve. If the upstream is higher, backwater valve needed. If it's lower, do not install. Do not install that backwater valve, okay? So it was um, because, let's just say you got a stoppage here. You come off and there's more homes. That's going off and catching another another house. Goes off here and catches a, uh, another house. Okay. 
So as stuff starts to build and comes back up the line, it's going to start coming up to this line. Uh, your line, and maybe your house is the lowest point. Water, liquid's going to come out the lowest point. If your house happens to be the lowest point, everybody upstream is going to keep flushing their stuff, and all of it's coming down the line, going back up the lines, and they keep using their stuff because it's going somewhere. It's going out into your house. It's just going to be bubbling up, bubbling up, and here it comes, and you're going to be like, I'm not using anything. I don't know water's running, nothing, but just stuff just keeps coming out my drains. Bad day, bad situation. Um, so you can see what all your neighbors had for supper the night before when it's like, oh my goodness, this is disgusting. And, and it can make a huge, huge mess. So what we do is we come in here. If you say, oh, we are lower than that, we put install a backwater valve in the line, that check line uh, where everything drains through. And then so if stuff starts backing up, that flapper is going to shut. I mean, you're stopped up. If you start using stuff, it's not it, your stuff has nowhere to go. Um, but at least it's keeping all of your neighbor's stuff from continuing to come out into your house. Um, I was told uh, we used to go have to do some continuing ed hours, and I did sit through one of the classes and had someone say, uh, the guy who teaches said, "Hey, if you aren't sure whether you need one, just put one just in case." Um, but that's not what the code book says, okay? The code book says only put one if it's required. So if you read over that section, it says only put them if you need to. So if you had, the code is going to say if you had a two-story house, okay, let's just say that went up a little bit more, and you had a two-story house, it says now the bottom level needs one. The upper level doesn't because that's higher. It says to separate out the two lines, make the bad, uh, backwater valve service all the lower fixtures, Bring your upper the up uh, the upstairs stack. Bring that and connect it downstream of your backwater valve, so that the backwater valve is only servicing the downstairs. Uh, I did have actually had the the head plumbing inspector uh, for Winston was behind me, and I I glanced back at him. I said, "Is that going to fly with you?" And he just shook his head no. He's like, "No, where he he's he's going to go by that code book." Uh, so that's what it says. Only put one in there if you need it. And that's when you need the backwater back. All right, let's see what else we've got. Oh, I'm actually going to. That's about all the time we got time for. Let's. I'm going to let you read out the rest of that chapter on your own. Let's go over some questions, okay? So I hope that you all are really hanging with me through these videos and going through these questions. It's going to really help you on uh, some quizzes that I'm going to have for you. So number one, the hottest temperature allowed in the drainage system. What's the hottest temperature allowed in the drainage system? Go to 702.5 to find that answer. Okay, hottest temperature allowed in the drainage system. Go to 702.5 going to make you have to do a little bit of work before you take your video. Find your answers, get them ready. So when you take your quiz, you, you've already got those, the questions and the answers already looked up, makes it easy to take that quiz. What is the minimum slope requirement on a three inch pipe? Minimum slope requirement on a three inch pipe. Go to table 704.1. 704.1 will get you that answer. Also for number three is the minimum slope requirement on a two inch pipe. Same table, 704.1. Look and find what that is. Number four, can the drainage pipe be reduced in size in the direction of flow? Can you reduce the size of the drainage pipe in the direction of flow? Go to 704.2 for that. Also, um, it says the four by three water closet flange is not a reduction in flow. So that's not included in there. If I had a three-inch drain and stuff was draining into the three, can I go and jump it down to a two-inch line? Is that allowed? Uh, 704.2. Number five. What's the restriction for double sanitary tees uh, receiving the, the discharge of back-to-back -back washers? Double sanitary tees receiving the, receiving the discharge of back-to-back -back clothes washers. Uh, look at 
look at your table 706.3. And that last sentence after that, 706.3, is going to give you, say, if you look at the chart, it says, for restrictions on double sanitary tees, look at, uh, refer to um, 706.3. And if you read the directions, it says, your limitation is back-to-back -back pumping machines cannot be uh, through a double sanitary tee. Number six, a three-inch quarter bend. Oh, um, can you re can you put a three-inch quarter bend below a water closet flange? Three-inch qu uh, quarter bend below a water closet flange. Table seven hundred six point three. If you want to go to this table seven hundred six point three, look at footnote D. Now it says that you can put the quarter bend below the water closet flange. That's the one place you can put it. But the restriction is that the center line of the, the fitting is no more uh, than 12 inches below. So if you're within 12 inches below the water closet flange, you can install a, a, three, a quarter bend below the water closet flange. Can you put a sanitary T on its side for drainage? Can you install a sanitary T on its side for drainage purposes? Well, look at 706.3. Now, if you're laying on its side, the direction means horizontal to horizontal. We talked about that when we went over that chart of the last video to say, uh, so the first one would be below the water closet flange. There's the water closet flange. What would that be the position if you put a uh, the quarter bin below in there? Look at it in the direction of flow. When you flush the toilet that's mounted up on top of this, the flow is going to go this way and then it's going to turn and go that way. So it's the position is vertical to horizontal. Okay. Now this one, I say a sanitary T on its side. So if you look at the sanitary T on its side and you looked at the one opening and the T comes through like that. So if you're looking at it standing upright, the sanitary T looks like this. But if you laid it, flipped it over, and if you're looking through it, you're looking through this hole back down here, and then you see the hole opening on the side. So water would come in this way and then flow out this way, okay? So that would be horizontal to horizontal. Can you put a sanitary T in the horizontal to horizontal position? Um on it or on its side, as bus plumbers would call that. And then that is table 706.3. Look at that and say whether you can or not. Remember, if it's got a little X in the box, that means you can. If it's got some restriction, look at, look at the box. If it's got an X, make sure to look at the footnote and read footnotes. Number eight. Uh, the cleanouts on your horizontal drains can be not more than how many feet apart? What's the maximum distance? between cleanouts on horizontal drain. That is 708.1.1. Check that out. Number nine. Five, look that up. You'll say be this, a cleanout needs to be the same size as the line it serves up to four inch. So if it's a two inch line, what size cleanout do you need? A two inch. If it's a three inch line, what size cleanout do you need? Three inch. Four inch, four inch pipe, four inch cleanout. If you, 8.9 tells you. Number 11. So if, say, one fixture unit is equivalent to how many gallons per minute? Okay. One fixture unit is going to be how many gallons per minute? 709.3. That's about where we started this video at. For, for continuous and semi continuous flow. And you looked at that, and we said that uh, one gallon per minute is equivalent to two DFUs. That was the ratio. But look at 709.3. So what one fixture unit is equivalent to how many gallons per minute? Uh, 12, a DFU value of a bathtub. What is the DFU value of a bathtub? Look at table 709.1 for that. Find the bathtub, trace it across. Find the column says DFUs. What's the minimum trap size for a lavatory? Same chart. Minimum trap size for the lavatory. Look at table 709.1 for that information. 14. 
Maximum DFUs on a four inch building drain with a quarter of an inch per foot slope. Okay, that was that first chart, uh, sizing building drains, building sewers um, that we were covering there. Um, don't go down to the horizontal drains in, in stacks. That was the lower one. The upper one's building drain is what we're calling it. Um, and now find four inch over on the side. Trace it over to the column that has quarter inch per foot slope on it, where the two meet. That's going to tell you how many DFUs you can have on there. So find you got a four inch drain, trace it across to over to the quarter inch per foot column, and it will tell you how many DFUs. That's 710.11. And the last one what's the minimum size drain pipe that you can run underground? Uh, they actually have that on the bottom of the both of those charts, 710.11 and 710.12. If you look at a little footnote on the bottom of those, that will be the place that it'll tell you what's the minimum size drain line that you can have run underground. Uh, we've also talked about it in, in, the, uh, in the lecture part of it as we, we covered it. So, But you can go back and look at those bottom of those charts and, and find where that is. So take your time now. Go through, find these sections, look up the answers to them, and then just carefully read the questions and then uh, put in the correct answers. So... Uh, Many of you are doing really, really good through this. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos and then to take the quiz and being mindful of you. Uh, some of you, are, I, I think, are just rushing through it, just trying to get it done um, and maybe not watching the videos and taking your time to find uh, to look at um, looking up these questions and answers that we're going over. Uh, so we still have some more quizzes left. So you could still have a chance to bring those grades up. Just uh, watch the videos. Uh, make, you, make you little notes of, of these as we cover these quizzes. Uh, it's going to really help you out. So, all right. If you've got any questions, please let me know. Uh, I'm here to help you out in any way I can. So until then, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.